it's not often you get the chance to witness history. We were lucky enough to be invited by Udo, the manager of history management, and to see Running Shoe Innovation in real life. And we wanted to share it with you. This is a deep dive through Adidas running history. Udo showed everything from football boots to these insane track spikes. One of the first shoes with this terrible long metal spikes. And he went through the entire history of the boost compound, which is a different video. In this video though, we'll be focusing on running shoes. As I said yesterday, you met my dog, uh, Emil, um, better named after Zatopek. And this was Emil's training shoe, I'm not kidding. This was really used by him, not in Olympic games, but for a long mileage. And he was, what he said yesterday, he was the innovator for, for interval trainings like Ludiard later on in New Zealand, but, but Emil did like sometimes 50 times a 400 meter. At that time, they did not have these internal heat counters with a TPU. Adi was very clever to add a kind of cross. And the reason was when you see some of the old spikes, they, they call it bulged out and they lost their shape. The evolution, I could almost say, started in, in 1968, and the Azteca coat was a very thin one millimeter kangaroo leather and uh, was just for spikes in the front, but it was used for sprinters. It was used also by the long distance runners. Yeah, it was slightly padded. Yeah, it is padded, yeah. It is padded, but yeah. like I said, on cinder track, really, it wore down pretty fast. That's mm -hmm. why the shark skin was such a great innovation later on. This is a shoe from 1976. A terrific shoe, because I said, it, the shark skin had a great a track. The, the, the elements really were able to, to adapt to certain different tracks. Mm. We did not have to use real shark skin. It was a kind of plastic material. This is the famous shoe from Dick Fosbury, with which he innovated the, the Fosbury flop when he won the Mexico. Olympic Games in Mexico, 1968. And then, of course, I thought it might be worthwhile to really show you where Adidas running really started. At that time, nobody would call Zatopek's training shoe a running shoe. The first running shoe under the leadership of Adidasler was what they called the Akil. And this was a shoe with nice soft suede leather. And you see for the first time, an internal heel counter. Mm. So it really hugged the foot like a second skin. It was an outsole. It was much softer at that time. It was really soft. Of course, with time it grew and gets very hard. It was very flexible. I'm not allowed to, to flex that shoe any longer. This is really the first modern running shoe. It was the SL72. The Akil used leather, and leather, if it gets wet, loses a bit the shape, especially suede leather. But the SL was the first nylon-based running shoes. It really was a competition in those years against what came from Portland, with this uh, different side. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot the, the name, I, I don't know. This is exactly, uh, probably that was before your times, but that blue and yellow shoe was the Marathon 80 that was used by Grete Weitz. And when she first lined up in New York in 1978, and she was then not only running a fantastic time, but she was the first time winning it. She would win it another eight times. You might uh, start with the midfoot striking, but the more tired you get, the more you land on the heel. And even though it was a very low profile and flexible shoe, that small spoiler construction gave a great landing, softer landing. And if you see, if you take a closer look, you see how we use the Trefoil logo as an outsole design to get grip. And it was scheduled, or it was designed in a way that it gave grip here and it ensured a stronger push off. And this is like a shoe signed originally and used by, by Greta, TRX, which was used before that. It was a, a top shoe in the I believe it started in the late 70s and then in the 80s, primarily the TRX. A very, very solid, very, very stable and long cushioning material from those times. When the first equipment range was launched, you see this cabriolet shoe. This is one of those shoes where you have to be so careful. You see the scratches. This was polyurethane, this was EVA, but I could not show you torsionability on that shoe anymore. 
but it was one of the many shoes. It wasn't the best seller, but even today it inspires new designers to, to do new interpretations. But the equipment cushion, the equipment support, which was launched under this greenish concept, was a breakthrough. And people started to believe in it, and we had top runners all of a sudden starting to break records with it. This was the breakthrough in the 90s along with this new Spike series. Under the label of response, we also launched something that I think many people don't know, that we started with specific trail running shoes in the early 90s. Now I could say, Adi already had the idea with this shoe and with a marathon trainer to work on off-road specific shoes. But when we launched, especially the first response trail, we encouraged an entire generation of runners to switch their running off the road into nice trails, enjoy nature. And not all did it for competition purposes. I mean, we were crazy sometimes going to the Swiss Alpine Marathon running uh, 70 kilometers up to 3000 meters and down and we're a bit, a bit crazy. But that in particular, do you remember when uh, Klaus Rolzhofen mentioned this ground control system? That also, this is the system. You see the two plates are hidden inside, but when you land, the shoe is taking away all the shear forces from your body. So you had a lot more comfort. And this was before Boost. Boost, of course, does the same thing now. But these plates that were gliding were, to me, another game changer. And then, of course, with softer rubber and locks in the outsole, you had a terrific grip in uneven terrain. This was the first shoe with a tiny computer. So it would measure the mileage you ran, it would measure the steps you made, and there was just one hidden inside, and the, the, the right shoe was just a blank. But today, collectors would give a fortune for such an original shoe. Heile was trying for almost five years to be the first marathon runner to beat the famous 2 of 4. And this is exactly the shoe that he used in Berlin. And now you wouldn't believe, but Heile failed so many times. He failed in London, he failed in other city marathons, he failed the year before in Berlin. But on that morning, it was a chilly morning, it was a sunny day, and he stands at the, at the starting line and we see him and he does this, 2 or 3. And we just thought, this is crazy. And then when he came closer to the finish line, have you been to Berlin before? Yeah, yeah. Then you know, for even for the top runners between Brandenburg Gate and finish line, yeah. you need, for the top runners, you need a minute. So that's the magic number, yeah. one minute. And we saw the clock, 2.03, and I knew it's getting close, it's getting close. And when we saw it was Jogi Löw waiting at the, at the finish line with a, with a banner, and then the, the clock locked in at 2 or 3, 59. <laughs> it was not the lightest Adi Zero shoe, but it was exactly a big chunk of Adi Preen. But it was a very, very soft, subtle blown rubber where he landed and a strong push of material and this elastic Adi Preen Plus. Um, that was the standard of 208. I loved when he talked about this shoe last year at the Road to Records because he compared that to the next generation of race flats that we have now. And mm. Heider was right when he said probably he would have been two to three minutes, if not more, faster in the races. That's what I love so much about our generation of carbon reinforcements because we simulate the function of the metatarsal bones. Rather than having one big plate, which we already tried in the 90s. We had already with the Gazelle the shoe um, that we tried but now we got it right and the transition of forces is way more dramatic. This was Perez Jepcici when she ran the, the world record in the, in the half marathon in Prague with one of five, three, four. And this is the shoe that Senbera Teferi from Kenya used, the, the Takumi Sen, when she did a new world record on the 5,000 meters in a women only race with 14.29 when she was really doing this course here, the world record here at the Road to Records. So there's two generations, the Adios Pro and the Takumi Sen development, a low profile. To me, even more towards the midfoot striker or forefoot striker. And when you see them, like I said, 
if you get any chance to come when there is the road to Regat, come in because for us it's great to see them running around the campus and you now explore the campus yourself yeah. and the other thing is also how they support us to really tell us and this goes back to Adi. Uh, Adi would invite the athletes to tell them what they need, what they want, how they could improve. The guys in the lab do nothing else. It's down to earth. And this is one of my preferred shoes because this came from Tolat Pham, the guy who, who won the world championships in, uh, in Eugene in 205 last year. And you see already from one generation to the next, they make tiny changes but the ingredients from the midsole are amazing. Unfortunately, we not always get now the full pair back because what we learned in the city marathons, the organizers often keep half pair, start to cut them and start to measure precisely that they are all under the legal constraints that they put.